Check that. Uh, Knight thinking about Diana, which makes me very yep. excited. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to be seeing Diana with all the amazing picks that are always available. Uh, unless he was specifically thinking that Doombi was going to play something that Diana is good into. But as we saw with Genji yesterday, I think it's better to just go with high tier stuff that you're comfortable with rather than overthinking it and really delving deep into what kind of composition you're going to go for. Yeah. As long as it kind of works relatively well together and you're really comfortable in the champ and it's high tier, I would say go for it. And it seems like top esports, they're just mainly locking in comfort here. And as... super rounded. Like this yeah. is the most it's front to comp. back team fighting composition that you could see. Some pick options with the the Syndra Varus and the Thresh. We've got mirrored bottom lanes because of course Varus is busted and Crisp and Yuyanja are both very, very good at the Thresh. Yuyanja really uh, having an outstanding performance yesterday on the pickup, but also has been playing well this whole tournament uh, on the Thresh. And Crisp needs no introduction to how good he is on the champion. So no surprises there. I actually love Doinby's Galio in this instance. Yeah. Because uh, Galio Wukong sounds like the new Galio Jarvan to me. Because you just get in there, yeah. start spinning around, and then they get multiple knockups with the heroic entrance, Sounds and then you just painful. press your alt button again. Yeah. On it's like the bouncy castle. And they all get two people. Oh, just. <laughs> and here we are. Welcome to Summoner's Rift, ladies and gentlemen. Game number one of the MSC Finals. FPX 2019 World Champions up against Top Esports, the team that has Knight, the Chinese <laughs> mid laner. Who yeah. has been spoken about for many, many years. Not many, many years, only a couple. He's pretty young. But <laughs> he's been lording over Korean solo queue for a very long time. This guy has been spoken about. And then he uh, yeah, played internationally. It was a disappointment. Now, it's certainly not. This Khan is going to find 369. But there is a caster waiting in the wings. And we'll see whether Khan does make it too oh, far. Oh, the beat. Oh, he has been baited. Caster turns up. Now Khan. I yeah, and he's already used his Q. I think this should be either a flash or just a first blood. And they are going to flash for him, Ooh. but great timing by Khan. Oh, Keeps man. himself alive. Double flash for flash. In the end, Khan actually comes out ahead, although he has to use his teleport. Yes, it's not so bad. I mean, that was uh, a little bit interesting that, it's, that they went for it that way. But Khan actually uh, playing that out really, really well in terms of the flashes, as we're always going to have play shenanigans down here on the bottom side. Double the play shenanigans. Yeah. TP used by Khan. He should be getting back. As we're going to take a look at some of the... Oh, God. Where are the plays going? There's another exhaust to come out here as LWX down to about half health, but Jackie to 100. Now they're trying to turn it around as Yuyanja. What? Just going 1v2 boss mode here as the Thresh. It's Aftershock versus Guardian. So one of these Threshes is not like the other. Yeah. <laughs> There's that. Yanja's kind of, uh, he's going to be keeping himself alive pretty well, whereas the Guardian will help out LWX a little bit as well. Oh, yeah, boy. Oh, it's going to come down. There's the play. Good flash as the oh. hook barely misses LWX. Just breezed past his buttocks there, as you just saw. LWX still sitting on about 300 as Jackie Love with that ward in the brush should be able to start bullying this lane. This has just been Biffo since the very beginning. Mirror matchups have always tilted me uh, as a player. You know, you play normal games with your friends and you have to deal with that. Uh, oh no, this is really bad for LWX. You have to be able to trade back those. But the hook is going to land from Chris. The flash does come out, but in comes Casa. Right place, right time. First blood to top esports. This is how you play Lee Sin and make it look like a good pick. Be in the right place. Be there at the right time. Yeah. Uh, jungle gap? <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> well, well okay. speaking of jungle gap. Yeah, it's going to come in and <laughs> shut you right up, yeah. Mr. Valdez. Oh, Doombi, where are you going? I don't know, but Kasa, he got the memo immediately that Tien was there. But now we're going to turn it around. Okay. The jungle, even going to be able to lock down this Rift Scuttler, most likely. But Kasa lands the Q. Tien's at full health. LWX, not at full health. About the opposite of that. Just now, heals are going to come out. That is a great stun to get them to safety, as Chris was thinking about it. Didn't have, uh, did still have the flash, so... Flash hook could have come in. Yeah. Decided not to go for it then. Into the brush. And Doombi be picked up Unsealed Spellbook, by the way, which is why he's got heal <laughs> as a Galio. It means that uh, he'll be able to switch stuff like Ghost, like Teleport later on in the game. 
whereas he will have the heal for the majority okay. of it. And, and we're four minutes into the game. This is a Jackie Love teleport. Oh, no, that was night. It was night. Okay. Oh, that was, uh, that was a double teleport happening at the same time, and I actually thought Jackie Love was coming in. Oh, these bot lane teleports. Man. It's the LPL final, man. It's uh, <laughs> I was expecting it. action. I was expecting it. The 80 carry teleport to like top river. Hell yeah. As LWX, yeah, he's losing out in this trade at the moment. Neither of these 80 carries with their serrated dirks picked up just yet. Uh, able to stay even out on items at least is LWX, but still otherwise not exactly good news. Tien's going to come up, has a red buff at the ready, 369. He's going to build himself some items, but can he build himself a way out of this one? Down to half. Will make it into turret range. End of the line does a lot of work. Though. Fantastic sidestep from Khan. <laughs> oh, he's still in form, is this man. And we'll see whether he can uh, continue to do what he did to 369 on day one here today. Yeah, he's still got it. Khan with his mechanics. We saw it this entire tournament. And do you think he's it's able the Beatles that off here. Might uh, be the Beatles I like heck the hair, doing it. you know? The, the little helmet he's got going on, it's it's going to protect him from anything that can break his focus. You know, yeah. it'll keep him, he's, it's like he's got the blinders on. Nothing's going to uh, stop him from playing well in this game. He's just round glasses away from being John Lennon, actually. Like the <laughs> <laughs> It just looks really, it's not uh, a really look. cute, really cute. Yeah. I mean, John Lennon was a pretty talented gentleman, so I wouldn't sure. mind the, the comparison. We're going to check out the replay. This uh, playback on a crisp, he was always going to die. Got a three-man play at the end, but it was too little too late. I think the end uh, actually hooked him mid, like, when you take the hook as Thresh, you know, when he was going in. Ah. And he got hooked mid hook. <laughs> <laughs> These are interactions that we don't necessarily yeah. need to know about. Look at this. This side, side step. step, so sexy from Kong. Just put in that extra auto. Nobody gets knocked up for the potential Lee Sin to come in and trade for a one for one or anything like that. So, nice mechanics there. Khan is a little bit behind when it does come to the CS though, so far in the top side. So, 369, he's okay with it. He's, he's just chilling. He's an Orn. There's a big wave pushing into Khan, so he'll look to catch up here. Yep, it's not a great uh, situation here for Khan. Because uh, as 369 builds more and more items, it's just going to be even worse. However, as you can see, uh, still ahead in gold by just a little bit based on uh, the first that first kill that went down on the top side of the map. So all is not lost, absolutely, for FTX here. And this composition I'm favoring in team fights. I think the top esports have a lot more ability to capitalize on vision. And so look to see whether those wards are going to be going down. Of course, Syndra and Thresh together. Very, very good at locking down a single target. Target and uh, Varus, you guys have seen those damage numbers. If anyone gets CC'd and he can just freely throw abilities, it's uh, very, very scary. Varus is just kind of ridiculous, the amount of stuff he has in his kit. Whoa! He's going to have to flash that one as level 6 is hit first by LW, or rather by Jackie Love. Instantly thrown out. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty far behind down on the bottom side after Chris did die. They probably were able to zone away LWX, but Varus has kind of got everything. He's got insane damage. He has engage potential. <gasps> Khan missed a cannon. It's he all did. over. And he's just way too good right now. He's very overtuned, and uh, I think we're just going to have to see some Varus nerfs. I don't believe he got nerfed in 10-11. Haven't been able to play too much League the last four or five days with the... Uh, the MSC going? going on, yeah. But I think in 10-12, maybe, we're going to have to see some teams. Yep. Or oh, see some teams come up with uh, ways to mitigate it uh, that isn't just banning it away. Because sometimes, you know, Riot Games is going to make the first game a blind pick. And then you're going to have to do it. <laughs> okay? Yeah. It used to be the last game, but now we've guaranteed the blind pick. I actually like it more in game number one. As Jackie Love takes a bit of damage there. LWX picking up this minion wave uh, before going for a bit of a back. Ulti comes down here as 369. Gonna get knocked up a couple of times. Flash forward there from Doinby. The Bash Bros here on the top side of the map. Justice oh. Punch avoided. Oh. Ulti comes down as 369 is super tanky. But guys, oh. he ain't tanky <laughs> enough. Another punch from the Gargoyle. They're gonna be able to take him down. And FBX not even wanting to give up this dragon here. But they may have to, Doinby could potentially move down that river and try and get in range, but at only level eight, doesn't have the extra range on the heroic entrance. And yet still thinking about it though, the flash, sorry, uh, the dash not opted in for, there by Tien. 
get over the wall and go for any steel or anything like that. Okay. It was a, it was a cool proactive play up in the top side. That was, by the way, the unsealed spellbook teleport. So Dombey is not going to have that for quite a while. Uh, I forget exactly how many minutes it is or how many spells you have to use. I think it's like two or three you have to use and a certain amount of minutes until you can get yeah. the next or the same spell back that you just used. So it's it, not going to happen for a while, and that's really what Doinby was known for, especially in this tournament with the Galios, the, the teleport plays, you know? Oh, wow, the Q actually landing. There's the kick flash. Ulti comes down from Knight. Khan survives for a while, but not going to be able to survive for long enough. Tian moves on over. Scryer's Bloom to spot out the fact that he's not going to be able to go 1v2. Now thinking about heading towards this uh, Rift Scholar, but Knight says no. And the crab is taken by Kasa. Nicely done here. Three to two is the kill score now as uh. Top Esports pull it one back. Yeah, I think they ha should have a decent idea that they're, well, it's going to dash on top of the vision. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. They know exactly what's going on here. Tian is just going to show them. And yeah, they're just going to come on in. Don't be not going to be out of ult just yet. You aren't you there with the uh, ability to disengage. Khan's making his way in though. Winds of War to soften up the members of top. Casa back in this pit. Shelly's getting a bit frustrated. You can see that patience meter certainly going down. But he comes Jackie Love. And uh, Barris is on the bottom side of the map for FPX. So without LWX, I don't think FPX should be fighting right here. And they're not going to. They pick up the Eye of the Herald. And they look to see whether LWX can get enough plates to make this worth it. And I think that he probably will be able to. You can see it's a big minion wave. And uh, Teleport's going to come in. But he should still be able to get two plates. Yeah, and this is a difference that what it was talking about yesterday when we did have the first blind pick game of the day when it was Varus versus Varus. One of them went for Teleport and uh, Gathering Storm. The other Varus went for Heal and Scorch. So one side going for a very lame focus build, the other one going for a you know more you know scaling yep. game focus. But uh, we didn't see the Scorch or Gathering Storm difference, but there is Heal versus TP. Going back to this play, again, Doinby had to use a lot to pick up this kill. And it's up to you guys to really figure out whether this was worth it. Yes, they do get the kill. It goes to Khan, which is great. You know, having a, a fed Wukong is good. But at the same time, they give away the first Mountain Drake. And Teleport now is on cooldown. This is a fantastic mechanical read by Karsa, knowing exactly where that Wukong is going to stealth to. Tracks him down, picks up the kill. Now Chris possibly caught out of position as well. Very close on the Scat of the Week stun there from Knight. Crisp is going to be able to make it out. Yanja going to try and get some sneaky hooks there, but Crisp not going to be hooked today. And uh, Top will move back towards that bottom side. Jackie Love sitting at a couple of waves ahead at the moment as he pushes another wave into this turret. Chris missed the, te the, the, the ward there. Actually, both control wards he put down as well will miss that ward. And we've seen that ward do work. Yeah, well, there's the hook. It's going to land on a Jackie Love, and he just pops. Good night, sweet Prince Crisp. Going down low and goes golden as well. Tien here at exactly the right time, and now Top do have to run away. Their tail between their legs, but FPX now able to get another kill on the board. There are only 100 gold in the lead. But you can see Casa still sitting on that Eye of the Herald, so maybe able to eke out a little bit more cash uh, before these turret plates do go down in a minute's time. Carson comes in, teleport coming down yet again. We are fighting one more time, ladies and gentlemen, as there's the call of the Forge God, oh. avoided by Chris as he comes on it. He knows that he's dead, but LWX is going to go down first. The entire bottom lane has been destroyed, and top esports get their revenge very swiftly. Doimby here in the mid lane should be able to get himself a plate as Khan's ulting a minion wave, because why the heck not? Yep, just try to push that one down as fast as possible, I suppose. But Top Esports definitely going to get a pretty nice win here, especially because Jackie Love went mid, stopped the Galio push. And we'll see maybe even this... Oh, no, it's going to die right there. As we do see, Jackie Love has to be aware of the range and be ready to flash. He just wasn't expecting it. He had flash. When it's coming straight at you, you have to get out of there. So yeah. That's kind of just an outplay and a little mistake from Jackie Love. And then the follow-up teleport coming on in from the Syndra. Or actually it was both. Yeah, so Syndra double TP. And it didn't matter that the Ornhorn missed because Syndra 
does a lot of damage and is pretty insane, especially in the hands of someone like Knight. And he just picks up another kill. He's got the most CS in the game. Wouldn't be surprised with the way this game is going if Knight just runs away with it once again. And it's going to mean that our top esports should come over and take down this Cloud Drake. We're going to get a spicy Drake here this game as Earth, Wind, and Fire in order. Love this. Ooh. Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We're, we're a ways away from the 21st of September, but you best believe I'm going to be tweeting about it again this year. Are you? Oh, yeah. On the 21st of September? Yeah. As well, uh, Kasa gets another kick flash, and uh, good night. Wow. Good night? Yeah. Uh -huh. I get it. Yeah, because Knight. Yeah, he was good. good. He, yeah, he game played the heck out of Tien right there. <laughs> he pressed his buttons really well. <laughs> yeah, he pressed R, dude. Yeah. Sorry, his button. Yeah. Very well. I think he pressed Q beforehand so he could add an extra orb to his R. Uh, yeah. yeah. But really, that was just a nice play by Karsa. Yeah. Good denial of vision, and that's what sets it up. Tien has to be careful when they're behind. He has to understand that they are behind right now in this game. And that means you're going to have a lack of vision in your jungle. And we've seen these LPL junglers, they just love to get in your face, in your jungle. I mean, he saw the control ward with his scanner. You know, you can see it's a difference. If it's a regular ward, it pops up. Yeah. You see it's a regular ward. If it's a control ward or a blue ward, it just it, you show, like, the red outline. So he should have known that he was on vision. And he has to be careful there. Just a little bit of a Just wasn't seconds. able to be careful enough, right? Yeah. Like, sometimes you... Just think that you might be able to use your, your dash to get out of the way. Things like that. Like, not this time. That was, uh, he was very dead very quickly. But Kasa, utilizing this Lee Sin very, very well so far in the early game. 80% uh, kill participation so far. And that's exactly what you want out of a Lee Sin. Already with Black Lever complete. My god, he's so strong. He's out farming a Graves by over five camps. <laughs> Like, how the hell do you yeah. do that? He's just been a lot more active around the map, and he got those items quicker after the first blood that he did pick up in the bottom side, so it just allows him to clear everything much faster than his opponent. Oh, dear. And, Doombie might and he's going to do here. it again. I mean, the kick can just come out. There it goes. Straight into the loving arms of Jackie Love and Doinby. Might It's not looking like game one is uh, the right step forward for Doinby winning the mid-season cup to add to his trophy case after 2019. This is looking like all top so far. Yeah, kind of reminds me of the uh, top versus Gen G series, except the drafts are closer. Yeah, I mean, so they both have Varus, don't they? Yeah, it's giving F FPX a little bit of a better chance here, but Knight and Karsa specifically are just dumping on the lives of FPX tonight. Here in this first game, you know, 3-9, he saw a lot of focus on his lane early on, so he hasn't really been able to shine. But so far, the top side of the map has been the much better side here for top esports. And they've gotten pretty much every objective. And we'll see if they can pick up that Infernal Drake as well in about two minutes. And also, Let's like, a look the at this. The fact that Wukong managed to get like all of those turret plates, uh, the extra couple of kills as well. Let me check this out once again. It was just great layering of CC, to be honest. Doinby had nowhere that he could go. And uh, pretty elementary, to be perfectly honest. Moving down here to the Infernal Drake that's going to be up in a minute and a half. And I've completely lost my train of thought. I was going to say something, and it's gone. <laughs> Khan thankfully okay. saves me from my confusion as the box goes down from Yu Yanja. I don't know whether it's going to be enough there as Chains of Corruption do land. Q misses from Caster, though, as the Lantern takes Tien to get himself repositioned. And Knight here, bottom side, observed by this control ward. The top esports do regain control of this river, but just not so much the mid lane. As, uh, do need another minion wave on the side of FPX if they want to threaten. And that does give Top an opportunity. LWX gets hit by his own ability, which is very frustrating, and uh, loses half of his health bar. Yeah, and you can see the respect that comes in when the teleports are cast by the side of Top Esports. Immediately FPX that had the jump on the enemy Thresh said, no, we got it back. That could be... Whoa! Okay. That's a big flash to come in there as uh, 369 is going down very, very low. Probably is going to be taken out one for one trade, though. Tien did fall down earlier. Kasa is just going to take the Raptor camp. 
aggressive move. But one for one, not bad at all. Troll Ward comes in. Khan not going to be killing Kasa at this point in time as Jackie Love's pretty safe here, especially with Yuyanja available to flee people out of the way. Now there's nine seconds on this Infernal Drake. Top Esports with an opportunity to threaten Infernal Soul with this one as Kasa lands a Q, but needs to blast cone his way out. One versus four. I mean, he's pretty fed, but he ain't that fed. Yuyanja has to be careful of these ones, but four members of top have started off this Drake already, and there's no vision for FBX. They're going to have to give it up. So, Top Esports with a stranglehold on the objective game here so far. I mean, the Graves, he, he did not have his uh, resistances built up, and he just got one shot by the Syndra. As we'll take another look here. He sees the Syndra, and Tam just, he doesn't respect it. I mean, that's just QE. Okay. Yeah. And he loses 90% of his health bar. The ultimate comes in, and it's actually a good precaution because Doombi smartly tried to save him with the magic shield that was added to the ultimate. It just wasn't enough, though. And I say smartly because, you know, on paper it seems like a good idea, but yeah, that Cinder is just way too fed right now. We're talking about two and a half items, eight stacks on the Dark Seal, and FPX are going to have to say, blind pick, we can't do anything against these guys because we can't ban Cinder. <laughs> at this point. They could have picked it though, Valdez. True. That's, um, that's where I'm sort of a little bit baffled, but that's okay. Don't be sort of probably understanding that, and uh, Galio has never had too much of a hard time, but I feel like at the current power level of Syndra, is, it's not exactly that we can mitigate this and be better in a team Maybe fight dead, type yeah. pickup as, yeah, Elder yeah. Yep. Yeah, definitely dead. It's too many orbs, dude. Eight. Too many orbs. He's just too fed, right? There's, it's a Varus who has zero <laughs> resistances, by the way, none. And he has know. a Lost Whisper, though. Okay. All right. <laughs> That'll he's, he's help. He's got him. something going for him, I guess. Well, Chains of Corruption land. That's a great hook out on Khan. That wasn't the real one, though. Is the real one? It started the ultimate up on Zakasa. Not doing nearly <laughs> enough damage, but Knight is pushed below half health. Might give them an opportunity. Khan presses his R button for fun as it was running out. Three and a half thousand gold here, the lead for top. Three minutes until that Infernal Soul is available. And I think that, that is just the one of the last nails in the coffin. There's been a few of them so far this game, especially with the amount of uh, just objective control that top have had. Uh, but that could certainly be the last one as uh, thankfully something misses from Jackie Love before he takes that lantern away. Yeah, we're just gonna take another look here. So it starts off with Jackie Love opening up the play, which means that Knight doesn't really need to land a combo. He just needs to land his R. So he just flashes. He needs to range. hit his, his yeah. skill shot. His he, he needs to shot. press R on the Varus, and that's exactly <laughs> what he did. He casted his Q first, and I think he also had a W orb that he threw forward. So add some extra orbs in there, <laughs> and uh, he's picked up a Majice now. And I don't see any reason why he would not. At this point, the guy is just hes super confident on this pick. And, and mega nice. fed. And it's exactly the right time uh, to be pressing up as this uh, top esports team composition. I think Top's just very, very good at recognizing when their composition is strong and then forcing fights. And unfortunately for FBX, it's uh, in their nature to just take all of those fights anyway, right? They can't help it. <laughs> they can't. It's, it's uh, instinct, you it know? It's, it's, it's one of the reasons why we love them. But unfortunately, in this game, it's working against the Zolti does come down. And speaking of FPX going aggressive, they are going to go for Kasa. Unable to, though, as Khan, he's going to come in and try his luck. Gets exhausted, though, as Yanja keeps himself alive. And now, another opportunity to try and get a re-engage happening here for top. But Call of the Forge God doesn't really do enough. Ulti going to come out. Oh, no, not yet. As Chris gets himself out of there with the help of Zoinby. This is what you were talking about. You know, they just... Uh... So they can't help themselves. They have to fight. And mm -hmm. in that in that case, it wasn't so bad because it was 5v3, but I don't think they had the vision to, you know, they weren't respecting vision because the Syndra could have been closer. And there was one other guy, I think it was Orn actually, who was a little bit behind the rest of his team. But what they were seeing was, hey, we almost got the Lee Sin. We only see three members. Maybe we can force a fight here. Okay, actually, they did see the Syndra up top lane. So that gives them some extra knowledge as to, you know, why they would try to force the fight. Fortunately, there's no real follow-up because eventually, you know, they get too scared to get close enough. LWX throws out a Q. <laughs> and Tian, like, he flashed as soon as Knight was anywhere near him. Yeah. 
It was, uh, and understandably as well. He knows. See how scary Knight is. Right <laughs> he knows now. who the alpha on the rift is right now. Oh <laughs> yeah. It's not. Uh, it's not his mid laner. It's actually the enemy mid laner. That is good old Knight. But three thousand gold is the lead for top at the moment, and they're looking at. The uh, Infernal Soul is coming up in 15 seconds. Cars are in the area. They have full vision control. 369 with his teleport available, pushing out the top wave. And uh, he's going to move immediately here. They're not wasting any time as there's five seconds to go before Infernal. They need to get the Forge God in range. He's going to come down, build some stuff, and uh, set to task. Okay. Nuts will spot out Knight and Casa as they have started. This Infernal Drake, they pull it out of the pit, and FBX, you have to fight for this one, gentlemen. There's going to be no other way, but it's just dead. Too way late. too fast. Too late. And they get out. So, free Infernal Soul. Uh, no worries. What was that? You see that? Total damage dealt in the team fight. Everybody had zero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, might want to hide that one up. Yep. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, this game is its in a really dire spot now for FBX. They have to get lucky and catch either Jackie Love and Knight pretty much for the next two or three team fights before the fight starts. Otherwise, I don't think they're going to have a chance to tell because we're talking about Infernal Soul, Varus, and Syndra. <laughs> yeah, and it, there's a... It's insane. Kintsu's Wraith. There's the Wraith Blade done as well. Is now going be Looks to try and grab someone, but he's not going to be able to do so. Yuanjo able to flash his way to safety. Top Esports now grouped up as five. Only their Thresh limping for the moment. Call the Forge God comes out as, yeah, you don't want to take that Lantern LWX. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, and thankfully he used his Noggin on that one and uh, did keep himself alive. Khan down to about half health here as Kasa pressing in on this inner turret. Looks like Top do have Baron on the mind for now though. You could probably just go for it. You have really nice turn with Syndra Thresh Horn. Blow the Ornhorn, horn, and it's going to be really difficult for FTX to really enter the pit. Unless they do go for, you know, just put the blinders on and dive the back line. Wukong Galio, you were talking about that combination. Yeah, in I'm going to stop talking about that yeah. combination now, Valdez. I mean, it's their only <laughs> hope, though, right? It's like the yeah. only thing they have because Graves isn't really doing anything. Their Varus is it's a little bit behind. It doesn't have the Orn uh, upgrade, so definitely behind. And. They're, you know, all they have as a chance is to really eliminate some of those squishy carries in the back line. Oh my god. Yeah, Cinder gets pretty nutty once you get this far ahead. <laughs> that almost pro that was like, one. like two spells and almost proc his yep. sterics. That's crazy. Well, Ulti comes in. Great. Uh, Mikhail's Crucible to come out from Yuyanja to keep Knight alive. It's a great item to pick up, by the way. From both I had, had to think really hard. I like looked for the cleanse, yeah. looked for the QSS. <laughs> oh, there's a Mikhail's. Okay, there we go. A play-by-play -play moment. <laughs> it was definitely a play-by-play -play moment. <laughs> but you, you handled it very well. Thanks, Valdez. Yeah. I learned from the best. Oh. His name's Brendan Valdez. It's the play-by-play. <laughs> <laughs> It's freak. <laughs> no, it was actually pastry time. Let's be real. Yeah. He was my original True. sensei. True. As, uh, okay, Top are going to go for the turn. This is exactly... Oh, what? Okay, <laughs> goodbye, Chris. He is now crispy oh, in the oven. Oh. Uh, as uh, yeah, Knight just does too much damage. Uh, no ulti, by the way. Um, still has that R button available. He's got the Hanshis now, too. Yeah, so it's getting real scary. The Baron down to about half. Knight is uh, a one-man army, probably worth about four on the side of FPX. At this point in time, Yuyanja just there to make sure that no jungle is going to be a problem. Dude. LWX, where are you going? Uh, well, <laughs> to the death chamber perhaps as Knight comes on over, presses okay. the R button, and he's going to find right. the kill with the last Q, <laughs> and walks away. The Baron, in the meantime, is going to be taken, and also Tian, who is going for a bit of a steal, is going to fall down. Great knock-up there from 369, and Top Esports are the best team in this tournament. I think we can almost say that for sure now. This game has been... It was pretty close at the beginning, but uh, from about 15 minutes, it has not been. Yeah. Well, I feel like this semifinals is kind of like a best of one and then a best of four, if that makes any sense, right? Yeah. Top Esports look to be by far the best team in blind pick, and they have proven that twice in a row now. Although Genji didn't put up much of a, of a fight, if you can be real for a second. We'll have to wait and see. You know, maybe you go ahead, you ban Varus, you ban Syndra. I think you need to ban Knight. 
You need well. to get them to bring a different <laughs> mid laner. Look at this, Snipe just doesn't care. This yeah. is what I was talking about. LWX can't be that close, but doing B had a plan. Unfortunately, you know, you can't lock him down forever. The, the flash engage was nearly enough to catch Knight off guard. And then the... the oh my goodness. And he's just so speedy. Yeah, he's it's got the Magi's. Phase rush. Yeah, Magi's phase rush. Does, is it activated? I don't think it's activated. Is the movement speed activated at 18 stacks? I don't it's think so. Oh, is right. it? Okay, never mind. Because uh, this is I something I heard from LS. He's like a big Magi's aficionado because it's his favorite book. It is because his favorite book. it's not book. Morello's. Yep. He says if you get 10 stacks, you might as well build the Magi's because, you know, it's only 1050 plus you get the activation. So I, I from all the that times was, he's said that, I'm like... Okay, I thought that I was from stack value uh, being gold efficient at 10 stacks. That's what I thought. So maybe I was, maybe maybe. I was wrong. Maybe. It's been a while. Um, I actually thought there was sort of the quickly. sort of the occult that gave you the, the movement speed. <laughs> that item is no longer in the game. In the turret going to fall down. The reason why we're talking about uh, weird stuff like uh, like books and movement speed is because this game is largely heading towards over territory. Ten thousand gold the lead. Infernal Drake Soul available for top esports. Better players in a lot of their lanes by the looks of things this game. And uh, Varus existing. I know it's yeah, there it's on both stacks. sides. Ten, ten stacks, stacks okay. you get ten percent bonus movement speed. That's fantastic. And well, he's uh, he's moving pretty damn fast. I don't even think he needs those uh, those particular stats because uh, this uh, phase rush is certainly working out. Also, and are uh, they going to take a couple of inhibitors? Three six nine working on that bottom side of the map. And uh, yeah, it's just looking pretty comfy here, Valdez. Yeah, pretty straightforward for them now uh, with the infernal soul. And the Baron. Uh, this is going to be that last-ditch attempt, and, well, <laughs> okay. That was about what we were expecting. He's like, yeah, I'm coming in! Uh, no. Never mind. No, nah, not that this time. That was a little bit of damage that, that? took. That was one Was that a arrow. Q? Yes, okay. One. Well, uh, there's the kickback on Takan. He's going to dive on forward, gets himself a bit of a cyclone on the knife, but it will Ooh. be taken down. Collateral damage secures the kill, and maybe that's now, there's Doinby, finds Jackie Love. Gonna need that last auto, maybe another ability is Justice Punch, Colossal Smash is going to get rid of the Varus. Top Esports, they may not be walking away from this one. Decoy taken down there by 369, but he is very, very tanky, and Doinby's going to fall. And now it looks like the wallets of top are just a little bit too heavy, Valdez, and have given FPX a slight concussion. However, they still do come out of the fight ahead, Losing only Doinby in that particular exchange. But all of the inhibitor turrets, uh, only one inhibitor remains, and only one Nexus turret left on this map. Top Esports still are going to win this game. Yeah, that was the last ditch attempt I was talking about. They were able to eliminate Knight. And it was really all because Khan was able to get in range. You see, the kick goes in, and then Khan's like, I only have one direction from here. And it wasn't even the Galio ultimate that catches Knight. It's just a ton of damage that comes out from the back line, finished off by the Graves ultimate. And once they don't have Syndra, I know Ornn is, you know, Tank Assassin, Mage, Warlock, Paladin, but he's still not able to do it 1v4 in the back line, as Elder will go down to top esports, by the way. Yep, 100% of, like, every objective has been taken by top so far, and I don't know how many Rams have actually landed on the second cast for 369, but it hasn't been too many. Good avoidance there by FPX, but maybe we're going to have to get our eyes in here on the side of 369. And uh, he's just looking for the last remaining inhibitor. And I don't think it really matters whether 369 is going to hit ults or not. They just need to uh, right-click the Nexus. Zoning ults. It's, yeah. Uh, there we go. Get away from the ults. Uh, Tien is dead if Knight presses any more buttons on him. As he's like throwing orbs there. around as 369 does get the knock up onto Khan. Ooh. Phenomenal hook as Jackie Love's going to get the damage in. That's Khan dead. Tien dies as well. Didn't quite catch it, but he doesn't have much of a health bar, so it probably took a couple of abilities. Another oh. one from Yu Yanja. He just picked up player of the game from those back-to-back -back hooks. They were both stunning. Doesn't actually matter whether he landed them as he hits another one just before this Nexus falls down. Top esports looking in about as good form as they were yesterday. Unbelievable stuff. Yeah, blind pick seems to be uh, the name of the game here for the side of top esports. And they proved yesterday that it's not just blind pick, that they can move on to three zeros. And just the, the sheer amount of domination we witnessed there in game one, 
Yeah. Does make you feel like we might be witnessing another 3-0 today, Atlas. Might be. I mean, blind pick is a very different thing to uh, to just regular draft League of Legends, right? And I think that uh, as far as FPX yeah. are concerned, I think they do a lot of their best work in the draft with the flexibility uh, of all of their players. So uh, look to see what they can do in game number two. I don't think that they're